Yes, yes, we all know. Okay, so do we want to start with tests? Or the te upcoming test, or do you have specific problems, or is it kind of like a weird intersection of the two? How are we gonna start this? We're not doing those. Even though those are not that hard, we're not doing those. Uh, another binomial problem, sure we could do that. Um, we could do a binomial as the test because whatever. Let me see if I could find one real quick. Since everyone has their camera off, I can just watch the test or the text and it's the same thing. And then you guys can't see what I'm doing. Does anyone watch the video from last week? Did it show both screens or no? I have no idea. Test manager, here we go. Oh, I want to do the preview, not this. Um, probability distribution. Wow. I'm looking for one. It's just, it's weird. Okay, this one doesn't even. I just ran through the entire test and there wasn't a binomial problem. This is a weird test. Because um, last time I had like two or three. Yes, yes, I know. Let me pull them up. Was there uh, a question on binomials in the homework? Because I could do that as well. Tanya, you were doing that. Is there one specific one that you're looking at? Wait, everyone's far enough away. I'm, I've had enough of those for the day. Don't come up, I will breathe on you. Honestly, we are set up far enough apart. If we, you guys really wanted to, you could probably do the same thing and, I, and we can close the door and no one would care. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, somebody's here, I just saw. But, you know, it is what it is. Let me see if I can find one while I'm looking through here. Oh, so is this like uh, the NXPQ nonsense? Is that the binomial? Let me see if I have. Okay, so I'm looking for one that's an actual running. I could just use this and then so I'm gonna steal this one. Of course, two people. Oh, by the way, guys, I don't care how you want to attend class if you want to do Zoom or in person. You're, if you're being sick, if you feel sick, you're having a bad day, you don't feel like doing your hair, whatever, just jump on Zoom, okay? I don't really care. Um, because it's just easier and then we don't have to worry about, you know, anybody being sick or anyone getting sick and all that nonsense. We have that luxury, let's use it, okay? Uh, and you don't have to let me know. You just pop up. My main thing is just do those DQs so I know that you're participating. Because I know some people just don't work 
with classes, especially in these flip model classrooms, and I understand that. Which is weird for a lot of professors to deal with that, but that's life. Okay. Uh, the... Where's the actual formula? Oh, yeah, that's uh, piece. Wait. So I'm looking, making sure I get the right formula before I go into things. Oh, wait, I've already been here. I should have put them in the dashboard. Let me look real quick. I, I, yeah, I put them into this today. Um, most likely from now on, I'm going to upload DQs and your weekly grades on Wednesday. I'm just going to take one of my lesson preps and not do my, my work work, but do you guys's, because that's the only way it's going to get done. So, um, first I just want the pro, there we go. Where is this textbook is annoying. Can they not just? Sorry, I do not like. There we go. There's the formula. Sorry, it took so long. So the formula for probability of an event is and. Over n minus x exclamation not tilde. So we have essentially this. Let me sound from above. So what is that formula? Actually, we also have times p the x times q the n minus x. So what is this part of the formula? Is that permeations or is that choose? Do you remember? So because people are having trouble remembering, Permeation is the number of different ways events can happen. So according to this that I got right here, let me put it over here. This is choose. Let me share real quick, change my share options. So this is the formula for choose right here. So this is what we're doing for the first part. So if you have a calculator or you're using Excel, you don't have to make it big and complicated. You could just do choose and R. Um, so what we're going to do is we need N, X, P, and Q for anything. And what we need to choose, find is choose N, R, or N, X, and then we need to know P, the X, and Q to the N minus X. So whenever I set up these, and I would highly recommend having just a huge spreadsheet of everything you're going to use for the test because what their one they make is nice remember that you're going to be the one that uses it not them so you need to make a spreadsheet that you can use not as provided for you and i always recommend doing that this is something i tend to do b 
because it was easy for me. I like breaking numbers down and if there's an error in one part, I can change it. I could also use this for choose later if I so want. So equals choose. So I have this and this. And it's going to come up with that because I don't have any numbers. Then I'm going to have equals this to the x value. And then this is going to be this to the n minus x. So I'm just literally coding in what will be the values. Uh, and I can always check this if I want. Whenever I set this up for the first time, I always check it because I want to be sure that I didn't goof. So most of them, I don't like the choose. I, for some reason, I always feel weird about when they do those complex functions. So the permeations is that exclamation mark. Um, so whenever that's like a permeation of four is one times two times three times four. It's just every number in a sequence times each other. So I can kind of use this to calculate my value. So I'm going to have that divided by okay. Uh, then we're going to have, I'm going to open two brackets because I don't trust myself, n minus x. Oops, I forgot that permeation. The permute. Times a permute of x. And then all that is times, oh wait, that's all I want, sorry. Okay, that is really loud, I'm gonna turn that down. You enter too few arguments for this. Oh, oh. am I doing the wrong thing? I will check. Well, here, let me check this out and see if this is working. So if we have a test problem, like, oh, where do I have it up? Uh, we have the number of procedures result in binomial distribution, uh, whatever. So we had 150 bald men were treated with shampoo uh, regarding how they felt with their scalp. So we treat 150 men. With scalp shampoo for baldness. I don't make the problems. I guess they're working on the, the itchiness of bald hair. I've n I don't know. Uh, 145 were successful. I'm just making the rest up because it doesn't have this. If I choose 20 people at random, what are the chances that two were not successful? So this means binomial, right? We have a probability event occurs, which we can get from here. So remember, this is probability of success. So this would be 145 out of 150. We had 145 successes out of 150, which gives us a pretty high success rate. The Q is the probability of not success. So one minus RP. The N is the number of people that we grab for our sample. So we picked out 20 people 
there. And we're trying to figure out if two of them, I guess it's that backwards. Oh, I see. Combin, that's what it is. All right. Number 20. Number chosen. Two. How many of them will happen? So we get 96% chance of success, 30.3 chance of failure. We have 190 different combinations of choosing the people of the 20. We have a probabil probability times your success of 0.934 and the Q of this. So to actually find the probability equals that times that times is really, really small to find people who are not successful. I do think you can just do uh, so you can do this as well. Number of successes, phytom dot disk, number of trials, probability, and this is if you're building it, remember? And this is if it's not. So if you're just looking for one number, it's always false. And I got a different number. Why did I get a different number? Oh, I know why. I just got a really different number. Huh. Number of successes, two. Number of trials, 20. The probability of S. Probability of success is that. And cumulative. I don't know. Why did I get a, such a big different number? Well, let me do it by math. Can you, uh, yes, P of X is there, or that one. So why am I getting a different number? That's a good question. If I had, prime over, this is going to bother me, by the way, if you didn't figure that out. Oh, wait, 20 prime, or 20 combination. So that is times two, or 19 times 20. So 190, that is correct. Sorry, people online, I'm doing the math because I don't, I'm making sure that I trust the math. So that is correct. And P to the X is correct because I can't really mess up that math. It's B5 to the B4 and Q N minus X is right because I can't really mess up that. No, Q N minus X, you have a... Uh... I, and you have a different, is it supposed to be multiplication? Because yeah, you have like an up arrow. Yeah, no, right now it's supposed to be, no, the, the, the formula cells. is supposed to be uh, n to the x. The formula for this is q n to the x. Oh, okay. That is correct, I just didn't do that. Uh, oh yeah, it's q to the n to the x power. So this is right. I don't know why this is giving me a different answer. Which is why I say 
um, it's always nice to have both of them figured out because you never know which one's going to work. Um, and Excel does weird things. But the math behind that works out because I did it. And if you have a calculator, you can actually do the same thing. So I don't know. Hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> but this, that's the formula they give you in the book is that one. And Excel doesn't necessarily follow what books say. Um, yeah. Okay, let me next, in case, unless somebody has an issue with it. Do you want me to go over the wonderful um, lottery problems that everyone loves so much? I know you do. It's also some of the questions on here, I think. Does anyone remember what questions a lot of questions were? Because I mean, that's, that's the last of the kind of math questions that come up is, and the one people have the most annoyance with are the math ones or the, the lotto ones. Where are you at? Oh, here we go. This would be, if you're following along at home, number nine on set three. So let me open this new tab. I will say this, I don't care about morality. That's for other people to say. The lotto is a bad investment. Do not invest in the lotto, you will lose. There actually is, there has been, and it's hilarious. Has anybody ever actually seen, what, um, who was it? Voltaire did with the lottery. If you wanna go down a rabbit hole, look up what Voltaire did to the French lottery. The math, didn't add up and he exploited it. Uh, it was kind of funny. Um, and if anybody follows, uh, uh, anybody ever watched Epic Rap Battles of History, watch the Eastern philosopher versus the Western philosopher, they made fun of them for bringing the lottery. I love that battle, actually. Uh, let's see, probably question. Don't care about that. Really, they don't even have a true question on this. Okay, so why would you pay a dollar twenty three? Oh, jeez. Okay, we're gonna do a big three. I'm not gonna use some random things. So, my prompt because I like using normal numbers. You pay a dollar to get in a pick three. Does everyone know of pick three so I don't have to explain it? Pick three numbers, you win, yay. You have to match 100% in order. Um, payout is $100 because I like even numbers. So how many combinations? Are there? How 
How many different combinations are there to pull? What? So we have 10 times 10 times 10, all right? Because remember, numbers can go back in. So, what's your probability of winning? If you buy a ticket, what are your chances of winning? When well, you buy one ticket, uh, too many things. Ticket spot, one, combinations, F1 divided by F2. I have a 0 0.001 chance at winning. So if I win, how much do I win? Uh, no, wait, so. Not how much would I win, how much would I make? Because winning and making are two different things. So I won $300, I paid a dollar. I laughed whenever they uh, changed the Powerball and they, or the Powerball to two dollars instead of one dollars because they basically increased their money so much and they're going to have to pay out less based on it because of math. And I always lose it anyway, so whatever. Wait, there's this different. So I'm trying to make sure I get all the right questions to do it, and I don't actually have theirs. So they had 359.50. Now, expected value. That's a weird one. Does anyone know expected value? Anyone remember the formula? I'm trying to look it up in here. Prop so expected value is I'm going to pay this. I have a really bad chance of winning, and on that. They're going to pay off this. So for every ticket that someone buys, it's worth essentially 30 cents. So how much are they making out of it? How much do they make? Well, I'm paying a buck and they're paying out 30 cents. So they're making 70 cents a ticket. So here's the fun thing. So this is, so let's say I double this 600 and double that. Oh, look. They doubled the amount of money they made, even though they doubled the payout. So it may say, hey, it's not a big deal, it's an extra buck. And oh yeah, it's more money. But by doubling the amount that they pay and doubling the amount that you pay, you pay them more money and they make more money out of it. Which is why I kind of laugh when they did that. 
because they basically made more money on the lottery. What reference? I don't remember which reference I was talking about. Uh, oh, Epic Rap Battles of History. They did Eastern Philosophers versus Western Philosophers. And um, it was when uh, Socrates kind of imploded on the entire team and called Voltaire uh, uh, a frog that rigged the lottery. Voltaire and a f colleague found out that the lottery system in France that they were trying to use to recover from a war debt, imagine that, France and war debt, uh, was mathematically flawed. He was an ethicist. He believed that ethically speaking, if they're not smart enough to run a lottery that they make money on, because let's be honest, I could make this really, really enticing. So let's say I change this to, let's say I change this to 500 combinations and $300 and one. Or well, I could change it to 100. Or well, I could change it to nine. Pick three out of three numbers. Oh, no, that's a little too much. 20. Where's the number at? There's a number here. It's somewhere in here. That might be a number. I'm looking for it. There is a number of little heads. Oh, 300 is a break even point. So 301. So I can make it out of 301 possibilities, which would be. I don't even know what that is. I couldn't even do that. So the smallest one I could have is 243 to make money. So I could make it out of literally the worst combinations possible for me as a lottery. And make the worst amount of money possible. And I would still make the money. And it's something that I could do back in the 17th or 18th century easily mathematically. It's not weird concepts. We were doing calculus at that time. If they're not smart enough to hire somebody to say, we're not gonna lose money on this, are we? Then he thought ethically that there's nothing wrong with it. To which other ethicists are like, you intentionally gained this system that you knew was flawed instead of letting them know. And he responded with, well, if they should have known. Ethics does not equal morality. Anywho, uh, so yeah, and that's, this is literally what lotteries do. What are you willing to pay? And that's why they have those huge surveys. Would you pay twice the amount of money for a lottery ticket if you double the, the, chance, the, the amount you pay out? I always used to get the dollar lottery because it had a better payout to this. Better chance, didn't change the chances, but had a better payout. And then it's like, we reduced the number of milk balls on the Powerball. Yeah, and you expanded it on everything else. So everything they do is to make more money for them, not for you. Just like, like law, like gambling machines in general. The house always wins. Just play what you want for fun. I, that's why I always used to do, like when I went to Vegas, yeah, yeah, whatever, gambling. I used to play Keno. Because I just buy a card, then I'd go and do whatever shows I wanted and come back and I'd lose 10 bucks. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I won 500 once, so whatever. But I'm not going to spend there, sit there and just gamble nonstop because I know I'm going to lose. I may win some, but overall, you, the house always wins. 
because odds and ratios. Anywho, enough of that. That's how you do that. Expected value is when I pay for a ticket, that's about more or less how much money I expect that ticket to be worth, which is the probability of me winning times the payout. And how much they're going to make is, well, how much, you know, what was it, F6 minus F8? So I have how much I pay minus how much they're going to pay out. So as long as that they're paying out less than I pay, that's all they care about. As far as the question on the line, like the expected value of like how much you expect to get from this. Yeah. And so it's like you have to include like how much um, you expect to lose as well as how much you expect to win. Well, how much do I expect to lose? If you bought the so well, if I ex I expect to lose a dollar, technically, but that's beside the point. So if I, if I want to do that, it should just be if like the answer in the homework was just eighty seven. Dumb, I know. It's by equals one minus my probability times this. So I fully expect to lose ninety nine point seven cents. That's what I expect to lose. Like I said, usually, because I put this, I think it's if I go up here and put it back up to a thousand combinations, I expect to lose the dollar. That's one of the things that bugs me about homework that I don't grade is if you tell me that I'm playing the lottery and I expect to lose the dollar, I'd be okay with that. Because that's reality, because if your number's that small, you expect to lose everything. Okay, so that's that annoying question. By the way, if anyone knows what, what is it called? Anybody ever done a, a soccer, uh, is a Socrates lecture where they you ask a lot of like you can ask questions and I'll ask questions back at you. Socratic seminars. Socratic seminars. That's it. That's how I run every test. Do not be afraid to ask me questions. I will ask questions back at you. Okay. I am that weird professor who would be like, I don't care if you're not. I'm not going to give you the answer, but I'm going to try to lead you to the answer. Because what's the point of learning if you don't actually learn? And under pressure, sometimes you're like, I forget what I'm doing. And that's okay. So, uh, what else? What other questions? Anybody else run into some issues? Sure. Mm. Huh, yeah. Yeah, I don't plan anything uh, any, uh, carefully, so we'll go through that. Uh, I do like the fact that they do gender neutral here. Is that the same question you're reading? Um, yeah, I do like the gender neutral there. Uh, so we have, I'm going to make up different numbers because I'm not going to give you answers. And they usually have different numbers anyway, right? So we have a uniform distribution. Uh, let's do, let's do lower and upper of 42 and 58 minutes. So the probability a class runs between the lower and upper 51.5 and 52. Close enough without being the same question, right? 
Okay, let me look up the wonderful formula. It's been so long since I've, I, they tell you this and then if you don't use it daily, you never know. Oh, it's normal. Wait, what? Why do they give you, this is the weirdest thing ever. Oh, the probability of the total divided by, okay. So I need to have the spread. Uh, top that one and spread of this. Let me. It says you're supposed to do area under the graph. I'm so used to actually having formulas that this book is so bizarre. So you have an equal chance for all of these events to happen. How did they figure out the base probability? Oh. Is it really that simple? Sorry, I'm looking at it. It's ten minutes for it. Okay. Five. I'm pretty sure, actually, no, it's not that, it's. Oh, yeah, that is it. <laughs> As if you change the spread a little bit, like it's 51 to 52. And I, oh, I don't have to set up equals. Change it to that, and then this, I change this as well. It's, it's, it's a bizarre concept, because uh, if I change this to 42 and 52, yeah. So what it is, uh, people online, I apologize again, but you can kind of follow along. If I have a uniform distribution of, let's say, 10 units, and I'm looking for, is it all equal probability, right? And I'm looking for one-tenth of that unit, and everything has the same probability, it's one tenth. So I'm taking the spread, because it's all the same chance. It's all the same base, same base probability. So if I take the spread of the whole one, and, that's, uh, and the spread of what I'm looking at, divide them, I'm gonna get my base probability. Uniform ones are weird, because it's like, it can't be that easy but it is that easy. That's why I always have to look at it because it's like, can't literally be that easy. And here's the thing, you know what your mean is? On that one, it would be 47. It's halfway between everything. You know what the standard deviation is? One. They're bizarre. And unless you're, and here's the thing, nothing actually follows a uniform distribution. It doesn't happen because things happen to your uniform distribution device. Like 
your your bias in your coin flips, whether you know it or not. Dice get rounded edges. They don't always pop up on the same numbers or they're weighted intentionally or otherwise. You don't have true uniform distribution because that would mean everything is perfect and life is not perfect. Okay, any other questions now that we've done the weird one? So what else we have? Anybody online have any questions or problems they want to get looked at? I think we've done most of the math on the test, by the way. If anybody's done the review yet, probably not, but that's life. Fifteen, and they're not all math. Some of them are like, what? That's why I'm like, I don't know what to do because I thought we'd have all this time and then I look at them like, we've done most of the topics. Because some of them are like, what's well, a random distribution or a random sample? And I can't, I mean, I can tell you, but it's just gotta be stuff you memorize. Uh, let's see what else. We've gone over tests and critical regions and Z scores already, correct? You have no problems with those. Those are, it's a straight formula, right? Once you got the formula down, you just plug it in. I hope you just get your program to do whatever your answers are. Uh, yes, I th let me check if it's for a grade or not. I am not sure. Continue session, I caught it in time. So the question is, is the review for practice or for grade and we able to access it next week? I will change that to be next week. I'll change it to be Sunday if it's not already in a second, but I will tell you if it's for a grade or not because I could do that. Uh, like and one way I kind of want it to not be and in, oh, it is for a grade. I'm kind of split on that. So it should be accessible. It's due the 14th. Wait, it's due now. Wait, what? Uh, one second. You should have it available. You might have to finish the third homework. I'm going to push that back to the 18th because uh, that's the day before the test. Okay. Um, wait, what? Yeah, no, we're not. This is the, oh wait, this is the review. No, okay. I'm not going to do the, you have to finish it in one session thing for this, I just saw that. Um, wait, this, it's, a, it's a review. Yeah, I'm taking out the timer. Let's see, whatever. Well, students are pretty. And yes, I'm changing it so that you have access to it. Uh, you can do it a piece at a time. And if you want to print it out, you're allowed to do it for the review. Um, but like I said, we're gonna come in here and do it so you can't use it to cheat, okay? It's not gonna happen at the finals. You're not gonna have that for the final review because we're gonna do that on Zoom. So I can't control that, so I'm not gonna give you that option, okay? Uh, not that you couldn't do it if you know what you're doing anyway, but I'm going to make it so that you had to try harder if you want to do that. There, that's edited, so you guys should have access to that till Thursday. You should be able to do save, so you can actually use it to study. What a concept, um, just to make your life a little less hectic. And then we come in here Friday, we all do the socially distance thing, and I bring a book and answer questions. Yes, it's going to be due Thursday. Ignore anything that Loud Cloud says. It is due Thursday via Pearson's website. Okay. So more time, a little less stress, slightly. 
So then that will give you literally to the test to study. It's due at midnight on Thursday for the review. And then you come in Friday, we do that, and then you go and do stuff. Okay. That remember, test is next, or the midterm is next Friday. Not the end of the world. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I understand test stress. We'll talk about it. If it's bad, we'll deal with it, okay? Everyone, including online people. Okay. Mr. Anderson. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you. I'm sorry, what? I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, no worries. I'm Like I said, I've, I've totally bombed stats tests before and I teach it. So I'm, I'm about the most understanding math teacher ever on tests because I think they're dumb. But I have no choice. So sorry, guys. I'd rather you do projects because then at least you can yell at me to say, am I doing this right? By the way, is everyone keeping up to date on the project? Or have you all forgotten it? Just like to put that out there. <laughs> Maybe after the test, if you got time in your schedule, because you don't want to do that at the end of the semester, because that's never fun. Okay. Um, yeah, that's why I'm bringing it up. I will bring it up pretty much every week. So uh, you should be able to do a good portion of it already. And then we'll finish up the rest soon. So then you can just get it done. Bug me about it, make sure it's right, turn it in, get an A, your life is happy. Okay. Um, if as long as a couple things are done, like I like charts, I like graphs that are right, you get more points. Okay. If you don't make me want to hate what I'm reading, you get more points. Okay. <laughs> I've seen some really, really good papers. Like, this is awesome. I want to read more. And I've seen stuff where I'm like, what am I reading? Okay. Anything, anybody have anything else? Or are we all doing the hour where our brains are fried? Please stop talking so we can leave thing. That one. Got it. Uh, right now, I'm was. I'm reading a couple things. I'm. I'd like to finish reading Guards, Guards. Ever read that? It's Terry Pratchett. He's really, really odd, but he has like a Guards Watch series. Um, about he was a guard who basically gave up like drinking, smoking, being a degenerate, and like cleaned up his act because a dragon was attacking his city. He has the coolest theory ever. It's the uh, Sandvines theory of economic inequality by, based on boots. And it makes sense. If you are poor, let's, let's put it to modern days. If you are poor, are you gonna go and get shoes from let's say Walmart? Or are you gonna go spend money on real shoes? Walmart, right? So let's, let's, let's do it sandals because I can never find a good pair of sandals. How much does a pair of sandals at Walmart cost you? Five, 10 bucks. How long do they last? Two or three weeks before they start falling apart, right? And then you have to buy another one, and another one, and another one. Now let's say you go to a nice place with good sandals, how much do they cost you? 50, 60 bucks, right? How long do they last you? Two or three years, right? Now, if you don't have money, you're gonna buy the sandals from Walmart. If you do have monies, you're not. So how much more are you gonna spend on sandals because you can't afford good sandals than if you had money? And that's why rich people stay rich and poor people tend to stay poor because they can't afford to spend money to not spend money. That's the Sam Vimes theory of economic inequality put into modern terms. But it tends to be true. It, I mean, just like if you could buy a new car, how long is it gonna last and save you on money? later down the road than if you buy a 2003 Honda Accord with 250,000 miles on it. Okay, let me go ahead and end this. Uh, online people, you can free to run away. Alfita Zayn. Have a good night, thank you. Yep.